You're listening to your superpowered mind on the Superpower Up podcast, the show that investigates the innate power within your brain to create lasting change. Hello, everyone. Welcome to your superpowered mind. This is your host, Kristen Maxwell. And in this show, we explore the process of transformation and give you tools and strategies that you can use to transform your own life. Today, we have a treat. We are taking a slight detour, although only slight, because instead of talking about what we do to help keep our own minds out of depression and anxiety and to build lives that we love, we're going to be talking about communicating with our pets and how our relationship with our pets and our own mental state impacts them. We are talking to Rachel Augusta, and Rachel is a certified advanced proficiency healing touch for animals practitioner. And as a practitioner, Rachel works with animals all over the world who are sick, injured, have a terminal illness, or suffer from age-related issues or trauma due to previous abuse. She also has a passion for helping to keep animals and their owners healthy. Uh, Rachel has been featured by the New York Times, CNN, and BBC, and she has even been on the cover of People Magazine. I can't wait to ask her about that. Rachel has her own practice, works in hospitals, vet clinics and rehab facilities and shelters. So Rachel, welcome to your superpowered mind. Thank you, Kristen. It is so great to be here with you. I am very excited to, to talk to you because your work is so interesting. But before we really get into that, my first question is always, what superpower did you uncover as the result of mastering your mind? Um, the superpower I uncovered was the ability to create new cell growth in my body. Um, just by tapping into my joy center and, um, and knowing that I'm my own best preventative healthcare system right here, just by smiling and laughing. Wow. So can you tell, tell us a little bit more about that? Because that's definitely intriguing. Yeah. So I, um, in my work, I talk a lot about the physiological relaxation response and, um, this physiological relaxation response, um, I'll talk you through it. It helps people really understand our body and our animals' bodies and how we can, um, bring healing to our body or, or, um, disease. So when we're happy or when we're relaxed, our muscles relax. And when our muscles are relaxed, our blood becomes oxygenated. And with oxygenated blood, our body absorbs nutrients more efficiently from food, from tinctures, herbs, medicines. Our stomach creates digestive enzymes. With those digestive enzymes, your hormones start to regulate, your body detoxes, and new cell growth happens. And that physiological relaxation response is why if you go to the doctor uh, with a broken arm, you know, they're going to ask you your pain level. If you say two, they're going to give you an Advil. And if you say 10, they're going to prescribe you a Percocet. They're not handing out painkillers because they feel bad for you. They're trying to trigger this response in your body because you can't heal if it's not triggered. And um, I love knowing this. I, I feel like this is a superpower because this is what gets our body, you know, working. This is where you know, miracles, and I'm putting that in quotations, miracles happen. Um, when animals come to me and, you know, let's say with stage four advanced cancer are given a couple of days to live, but then end up living an additional two years and it looks like a miracle. The miracle is, is that we got their brain and body to start working with one another instead of against each other. And everybody has the ability to do this. And this is why I love this as my, my superpower, because knowing this and tapping into this, I know that I'm capable of bringing healing to my body. Yeah. Wow. That is, that is really a wonderful, um, a great explanation, by the way, one of the best I've heard of understanding how, you know, then not being in stress, so being relaxed actually can lead to health. So thank you for that. Yeah, that was very yeah, clear. yeah. So, you're welcome. So how did you get involved with 
animals Mm -hmm. with this, you know, with this knowledge and how do you use it with animals and with their owners? Yeah. So um, I started working with animals when my own sole companion, my kitty, got really super sick. She was diagnosed with a terminal illness and given a couple of weeks to live. And um, that was when I realized that there was a gap in our medical system that creates desperation. And her diagnosis threw me into desperation And I want to say, I love Western medicine. I'm so grateful for it. Thank God we have hospitals. We all know somebody whose life has been saved because of hospitals. Um, So I I love Western Mm -hmm. medicine. Thank God we have it. But it's not the only medicine we have, and that's not where it ends. And um, basically what my veterinarian said to me is, there's nothing more that can be done. But a truer answer would have been, there's nothing more I can do to help you. And that is what threw me into action, knowing that if anybody was going to help, you know, the most important person to me in my life, it was going to be me. I had to be the one to do it. So um, within days, I was studying um, through Healing Touch for Animals. It's a school in Colorado, but they were teaching classes at the University of Minnesota. And I immediately started taking these techniques of triggering this, this response in the body and applying them to, to Holly, my cat. She was given a couple of weeks to live. She ended up living an additional three years. Wow. Yes. And, um, and because, you know, I was really doing this for her to help her and, well, and to help me because I wasn't ready to say goodbye to her. And, um, you know, I know so many people with animals. I mean, everybody has animals, you know, they're an important part of our life. So all of a sudden, you know, my friends are like, here's my cat, here's my dog, here's my horse, here's my sugar glider, here's my, you know, here's a million animals. And I mean, it was like a rotating door. And all of a sudden I was like, you know, I'm going to be homeless if I don't (laughs) start charging. Like, I think this is my job now. And, and I was actually on a completely different path. I was going to, um, I was in the process of starting a manufacturing company for women's clothing. And then um, I realized that I wasn't supposed to be doing that. I was supposed to be helping animals and that's where it all started. That is that so interesting. And I have about a thousand questions that I want to ask. So when you work with animals in general, are you working with them in person or do you work with them remotely? Both. I do both. Um, so yeah, I have clients all over the world. I have clients in Lithuania. I've had to bring translators in to help translate conversations between us. Um, I have Australia, France, Italy, and then all over in the United States. And um, and so a lot of it involves coaching the humans, you know, a lot of what's going on in our house, you know, a lot of why animals are sick is because of environmental issues. So, you know, we need to find out what's going on in the house. Is there something really toxic in your house? You know, a chemical? Are you are you using Glade plugins? Are you burning a lot of scented candles? You know, what's going on in the house that would be impacting their health? And um, and something I always talk about with my clients and you know, all over the place is my first question is what stinks in your house? And you know, stinks, meaning two different things. There's um, the obvious stinky stuff like Mm -hmm. your Glade plugins and maybe your bleach and stuff like that, Mm that animals are very sensitive to. I mean, we all are, um, but they have many, you know, humans have 10 million neuron receptors in their brain associated with smell. A cat has 80 million and a dog has 400 million. And so, what in your house smells because it's going to be breaking down their nervous system through the neuron receptors and their olfactory bulb. It's often when we, people come to me and they have a very young animal, let's say a four-year-old chihuahua that's in heart failure. That's not normal. A four-year-old dog should not be in heart failure. There's something going on in the house usually that's, you know, stinky, something they're being exposed to. And then the other thing we look at is what's going on in the house that, um, 
stinky in a different way, and that's human emotions. So animals can smell our emotions. We've known that for a long time. There's a lot of science to back this up. Animals, we've known, you know, obviously dogs can smell fear. We know that. Animals can even smell um, cancer and diabetes. You know, that's why they're brought in as service animals, because they can smell these things on us. Well, there's a lot of science and proof that animals um, can smell our emotions, and if they're negative, and our animals are deeply bonded to us, you know, let's say you live with your dog or your cat and they love you and you're going through a divorce and you've been really super depressed and you can't pull yourself out of your depression, you know, not only is that harmful to your body, but it's also harmful to your animal's body. Your animal's going to get really sick with you because they love you. <laughs> yes, that's that's crazy. And let's. I want to go deeper into this after we take our break. Um, about how it is that we can communicate with our pets and also, you know, to help their health and how that relates to even our health. But before we take a break, can you um, let people know where they can find out more about you and this work? Yes. Um, they can go to my website, rachelaugusta.com. And I'm, you know, obviously on Instagram and Facebook and all of those places, but uh, all the links to that is are on my website. And that's really the easiest way to, to find me is rachelaugusta.com. Great. Hang in here. We have some more interesting stuff coming up. Hello, everyone. This is Tonya Don Reckla, Executive Director of Superpower Experts. And we want to thank each of you for making Superpower Up the number one podcast network for personal development and spiritual growth. Because people like you have the courage to say that mindfulness, healthy living, disrupting reality, the pursuit of consciousness, responsible entrepreneurship, and radical parenting matter. We now amass over 1 million downloads monthly in more than 90 countries. Our numbers keep growing because there are far more people willing to live divergently than mass media wants to acknowledge. For you, the change makers, the light bearers, the way showers, we say thank you. If you're ready to take the next step in your evolution, go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz. And as Neva Lee Rekla, our youngest podcaster, likes to remind us, remember, we all have superpowers and we can change the world. So we're back. And um, Rachel, I want to um, learn some more. You know, so our animals are attuned to our own emotions to the owner's emotions. And how, so how you started to tell us, how does that impact them? So for example, if the owner is depressed, mm -hmm. what is the dog going to, to clue in on or what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times when I share this, people are like, oh yes, I know my animals respond. Like they know when I'm having a bad day because they want to lay with me. And, and that is true. But the, the, it goes much deeper than that. So your animal can smell your negative emotion on you. They smell it. They know there's no hiding it. You know, like you could maybe hide it from another human, but you can't from an animal because they can smell you. And when they smell it, it clues them into, oh no, gosh, you know, Rachel or, oh, Kristen's really depressed. And they, they become so worried for you. It actually creates cortisol in their bodies. Well, a lot of cortisol leads to tumors and tumors lead to cancer. And so the scientists that were studying this in Italy, you know, they asked them, well, what do you do? You know, what do you do if, if you smell, if you smell like depression? And the scientists, the lead scientists said, go home and take a shower, like literally wash that smell off your body so your animals can't smell you. But you know, to me, that's just a Band-Aid on a bigger problem. And for some of us, that means we'd be showering all day long. You know, if, right, like, it's one thing if you're just having a bad day, but if you're living in a state of depression, you know, it's going to take more than a shower. You need to figure out what's going on in your life and how to fix it. Wow. Okay. So, so how does this work? So you've got somebody, they're calling you in. Mm -hmm. And this is funny, my dog, one of my dogs is just coming over to sniff what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I have my cat here too. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are you talking about me? Totally. Um, yeah. <laughs> if, if so, if you've got somebody who calls and the, their animal is sick and then you wonder, you know, it, it becomes clear to you that the person is depressed 
also the owner, how mm. do you help them? How do you help them to help their animal? Um, yeah. Where, where yeah. do you start? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. You know, because the thing is, is like, I'm not an expert on human emotions. Um, you know, my, I work with the animals, but um, what we do is, well, first of all, I have a membership site for, for women and their fur babies. And, um, and once a month we get on and meet, we meditate and we do a group healing together. And, you know, a lot of times these women, this is the only time they, they take that time for themselves. It's the only time they do that. And, you know, the Kristen, I'm sure you know, this is that, you know, we have all these women professionals, busy women who throw their, their throw themselves into their careers and don't make any time for themselves like any time for themselves. And so, you know, people always ask me what, well, what can I do? What, you know, what can I do to make myself feel good? And what makes me feel good might, might not make you feel good. And what triggers joy in me might not trigger joy in you. But I have, I believe that our animals, if we just start watching them and instead of letting them mirror us, we start mirroring them we'd be able to easier tap into some of that joy. I mean, you think about what do our animals teach us, you know, like find the sunny spots, right? connect with the people you love. Like why are we so deeply bonded with animals? I think one of the reasons is because they're just with us. And when we're laying with them, they don't have their cell phone and they're not scrolling Instagram and Facebook, you know, they're just with us. They're in, they're just connecting on a really deep level. What is something that's really lacking in our society. And so, you know, connect with people real, like really connect with people. When you go out, see your friend, put your cell phone away, listen, connect, engage, make eye contact, you know, in, in a way that your animals do for you. Um, play with sparkly stuff. <laughs> you know, it's one of the best lessons they teach us. Grab the sparkle ball, play with it, go play Frisbee, you know, get outside, like get the zoomies, go play. And I think if we started really looking at what we love about our animals and what they want to, en- they want to engage us in this activity. I, I think we would all find ourselves in much happier places. So whenever my cat gets the zoomies, mm-hmm. I stop what I'm doing and I turn on music and I get the zoomies with her. We dance. We turn it into a dance party. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually was even thinking this morning, I have two dogs and they do sleep in a crate, but I let them and right next to our bed, mm-hmm. um, let them out. And one of them, he, every morning it's like, it's another day. Yes. Yay! Yes. It's another day. <laughs> and he runs all over and he takes his toys and he throws them in the air. And it makes me laugh every morning because that's not usually how I feel in the morning. But that's oh, that just like I have the biggest smile on my face because honestly, like that. But, you know, like it makes you so happy and you're like, that's not how I feel, but God, I want to feel like that. You yes. know, like that's how that, you know, every, every, when you wake up in the morning, it's like, this is the best day ever. Yeah, exactly what he's like. It is so funny. And it just reminds, I mean, literally it reminds me that like, there's joy like that. Just pure mm-hmm. joy. Yeah. It totally, it's like pure joy and connection and play and just allowing yourself to like go kick up some leaves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's just really simple stuff. Right. As long as we can stop it sniffing each other, we're good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Unless the person smells good. Yes. Then then we can do that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. (laughs) So what, so if, when you're working with people, you know, from a distance or even in person, do you also, you know, to help a a pet that's not feeling well, do you teach them to touch them, to, to Mm. caress them? Totally. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. And, and what I do is, is I go in and I figure out where, you know, they're like, I try and build up the immune system as well as I can 
um, while I'm in the session and, you know, and I do stuff like that. And then yes, of course, um, you know, touch and massage. And I've taught classes, you know, online classes of like, how do you massage your animals? What's going to feel good? Like all of that feels really good. You know, triggering the physiological relaxation response in various ways um, for us and for them. You know, a lot of times when I explain that physiological relaxation response to people, they're like, wait, by creating endorphins in my brain, I can have this happen. It's like, yeah. And they're like, oh, I get that from yoga. And it's like, totally. Then awesome. Get that from yoga. Or if you get that from hiking, go get those, those, you know, endorphins from hiking, whatever it is. Um, it's just that, you know, sometimes when you're in pain or let's say you have a back injury, you can't do yoga. Right? right? Um, because it's going to hurt. That's on, that's how a lot of people end up in drug and, you know, alcohol rehab facilities is because they were prescribed the medications to trigger the response to begin the healing process. And then their body became addicted to it. And so, you know, it's like, if you are dealing with cancer or some sort of physical thing, and you're like, I can't go hike a mountain right now. I don't feel well. Or you have older dogs that are like, I don't feel well. What could I do? Um, and I just want to say caveat to this. This is why CBD oils are so popular. It triggers this response in the body without a lot of the negative um, side effects. And so, you know, what can we do? And I love that you brought up massage. Like, a soft, gentle massage is going to trigger that response. You know, nice, soft music is going to trigger that response. You know, have you, even the way you talk to your animals, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we've all experienced this, people who live with animals, you know, when you talk softly and gently to them, their eyes relax. Mm -hmm. And um, all of that is going to, to work, creating just a really comfortable environment for, for them, you know, and the other thing too is like when animals are really sick or someone we love is really sick, our response is to freak out, you know, like, oh my God, you know, we go into a state of stress. Right. We're worried for them. Oh no, you have stage four cancer. Well, research, the same group of scientists were able to prove that um, in addition to our negative emotions being able to cause disease in them, if they have a tumor, let's say, and we start freaking out. Oh, no, they have a tumor. They have a tumor. They're going to die. They're going to die. It makes the tumor grow because wow. we're putting more stress into the situation and that's feeding more cortisol into their body. And so a lot of times the best things we can do for an animal is get our own stress under control. So how would we do that? By creating a beautiful, you know, environment that's really relaxing. That's when our self-care needs to kick in. And, and, you know, and I know you've talked about this with other people I've listened to your interviews where it's like your self-care, like when do we go into self-care and, and, you know, and a lot of people forget about their own self-care when they're taking care of someone else. They think they don't have time to do that. That is when it is crucial to have awesome self-care is when you are taking care of someone else. Yes. And, and it's often, you know, this is sort of peripheral, but I've sort of along those lines, it's so good for many people to have pets because they then take the time, like if it's a dog, to take mm -hmm. a walk. Yep. They take the time to sit and pet something soft, which is mm -hmm. their animal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that these are relaxing things for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's like, this is your time then to take a, you know, sink into bath culture, like really like put on some soft music, take a bath, you know, just really set a super calm environment, you know, and all of that's going to trigger that response in, in people um, and in animals. And, you know, and one thing, and this sounds like, duh, obviously, but it's like, this is not the time to be blasting like heavy metal, you know, <laughs> like turn on soft music. And, you know, I'm a fan of binaural beats. Um, I'm a fan of just, just really soft, relaxing classical music and, um, you know, and just put, putting on your comfy pants and allowing yourself space to like, just connect and be with them. Yeah. 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 That's, that's lovely. Actually. I, and, and I, the way you explained the chemicals and then everything that that happens with your body, 
it actually understanding that is actually even motivating to me more to drop into that more because there is a way because in my in my type a way when i go mm-hmm. meditate it's mm-hmm. like i want to benefit <laughs> <laughs> yeah there is the benefit of relaxing in the moment but you're actually it's even more of a longer lasting i mean mm-hmm. totally aside from what it's doing to your your mind and your spirit but mm-hmm. yeah i mean you are creating new cell growth in your body and it, yeah it's it's just really it's just really, really amazing. You know, the thing with animals is they heal, they can heal so quickly. It's astonishing. It's shocking. Um, you know, like I've had cats who've come to me that really were given a couple of days to live that lived an additional nine, 10 months. And, you know, and people don't know, humans don't know how to explain it. And we're like, oh my, you know, the words that they, we come up with are oh, miracle, miracle. I hear that word a lot. It's a miracle. This is a miracle. I don't understand this miracle. And the miracle is that they're not invested in being sick right. and they get out of their own way. And if you can, you know, if you say to them, I'm here to help you and they're like, oh, awesome. That's great. Good. <laughs> yeah. I want that. They're not, you know, going, but ugh, my mom was mean to me when I was five and I don't know how to get through it. I'm holding on to all this childhood trauma and, and animals really don't do that. And so they can heal in a way that looks miraculous. Wow. And if humans, if we would allow ourselves to get out of our own way and out of their way when they're doing the healing process, which can be really hard. You know, I, a lot of my clients, I have some clients who are like, they say, you know what? They're, they're going to get through this. My animal's going to be on Oprah. I, I know that. I just know that this is going to be a miracle that it it turns into one. And when the human says, oh no, they're going to die. 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 The animal does usually die very quickly. And it's, it's difficult, you know, it'd be the same as if somebody was standing over us saying the same thing, you know, what we were going, what we're going through. And, you know, it's really difficult. It, it's it's really hard, but if we can move out of the way and just trust that our body knows, our body knows how to heal itself mm. if we let it. Right. Yeah. That's such a beautiful message. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and you know, and, and our animals, they can do that for themselves too, if we just give them the space to do it. But that's where that getting the stinky stuff can come out too, you know, getting the stinky stuff in your house out. You could be doing all of this mindful meditation and playing relaxing music. And, you know, but if you're burning scented candles with man-made fragrance, you know, I always think of Yankee candles, um, that fragrance is a hormone disruptor. And you think about hormones you know, what does that mean? Well, if you go back to the physiological relaxation response where your muscles relax, your blood becomes oxygenated, all of a sudden your stomach is creating digestive enzymes and your hormones are regulating, which creates new cell growth. Well, if your hormones are being disrupted by a scented candle, you're never getting to new cell growth. It turns into a broken wheel. And so you could be doing all of this work. You could be working with acupuncturists, massage therapists, getting chemo. You could be doing all this stuff. But if you're burning Yankee candles or Glade plugins or anything like that, it's going to constantly be disrupting the healing process. And that's why sometimes it takes a second set of eyes to come in and say, okay, yeah, this is all really good, but you can't burn it you can't burn candles in here anymore. (laughs) Or, oh, I've noticed you're burning incense. You know, incense is a DNA, just, um, it damages the DNA. Wow. Yeah. And so things to know. Yeah. So that's where it's like, it's, you know, you need to do sometimes a cocktail of healthy things, get out of the way and then remove stuff from the environment that would disrupt it. Right. And there is so much talk now about, you know, right. The toxins in the environment from, Mm -hmm everything from our cleaning products to our personal care products, Mm -hmm. you know, just realizing Mm -hmm. how much we expose ourselves to chemicals. Totally. Totally. And, you know, and, you know, and it's like the goes into the, you know, your olfactory bulb and your brain where all your neuron receptors are. So it starts to really mess with your nervous system. Right. Yeah. And a lot of us, if, you know, 
have a lot of many people in my experience who are on very much the healing journey mm-hmm. have challenges. They're sort of a more like the canary in the coal mine kind of people with mm-hmm. bordering on, you know, illness and or autoimmune challenges. So less able to even process some of these things or handle them. as mm, some. Totally, totally. And that's, you know, and that's really where it's like, I, like I said at the beginning, I love Western medicine. I'm so grateful for it. Like if you have broken legs or were hit by a car, by all means, like get yourself to the hospital. That's not the time for acupuncture, right? right. But it's not everything. And, and what I've seen it do is create a lot of desperation in our society, especially with people with autoimmune disease. You know, we don't know very much about autoimmune disease. And I, I worked with a cancer researcher who was like, Rachel, when you scratch your hand, dead skin cells fall off and your hand knows to regenerate new skin cells and your hand knows when to stop, but no biologist can answer how that is. Yeah. Remember that. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's actually really good to remember. That's where we are with medicine. Wow. And that's where, you know, it's like our body is amazing. Our brain is amazing. It's doing all sorts of stuff we're just really not even aware of. <sighs> that's so fun. I mean, just to to think about it from that way. So before we go, I actually would love, you know, I know you, one of the things you do is you help people to to learn how to turn tune in and and essentially communicate with their animals. You know, how... Can you just sort of walk us through what you have people do if they want to figure out what's going on with their dog or cat? Or, you know, was there a process for that? Yeah, you know, um, so the first thing I always recommend, honestly, if they're, if they if there's something wrong with their animal is I always say, go to the doctor and get a diagnosis. Like, you know, it's good to know. Like, it's good if we just know. Um, you know, your cat might have a urinary tract infection. Like there might be something bigger going on and it's really good to know that's always the very first place to go. And um, sometimes you get a really good clear diagnosis and sometimes we don't. And that's when then we start to dig deeper, whether you have a diagnosis or not, what brought this on or we don't, we can't get a diagnosis. What's going on? What's going on in the house? And when we just start to dig a little bit deeper and, um, and then I do body scans and stuff and stuff on the animal where I can, um, figure out, you know, let's say if there's their visions going, but we don't really know to figure out would be a really complicated test. I can kind of go and say, it's the right eye. It's the left eye. I have the ability with the testing that I do to go in and kind of figure that out myself. And so, I would say, though, the first step is always a diagnosis Okay. if they can get one. Yeah. 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 All and, right. And then how do we let, uh, and how do we let our pets know that they're okay? Like just even in our- Yeah, I love that. Day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're going through something and that's, even if you're just having a bad day or you're going through something, I just say, talk to them in the same way that you would maybe a seven-year-old child. I'm going through, you know what? We're going through a divorce. I feel really bad right now, but this is mine. This is something that I have to experience. It's part of my journey. And the best way you can support me is by staying happy and healthy. And that then allows them to go, okay, I'll be here with you, but I'm not going to take this on with you. Awesome. Because they don't yeah. know how to put up their own shields. Yeah, they are right. They're in it with you. And um, and I have an audio on my website that's free. People can just go listen to it, download it to their phone or computer if they want. I have a lot of my clients listen to it with their animals, whether they're sick or not. And this audio actually triggers the physiological relaxation response in both the human and the animal. Um, and But what it does is it's... I've had people just use that alone and not work with me at all. And their animals have gone from like late stage kidney failure into just miraculous healing that the vet wasn't able to explain just by listening to that audio. And people will listen to it if, during 4th of July fireworks with their animals to really calm them down. And it has my voice and um, binaural beats and really soft music. And that's, you know, a free resource if anybody wants that. Uh, that's Awesome. So we actually need to wrap up. And I guess that was a really good way to lead in. So where can they find this, you know, about this recording and learn more about you? 
Thank you. Yep. They can um, find that on my website, rachelaugusta.com. And, um, and then on my website, there's links to all the places on social media where I'm located. That's great. It has been so fascinating to talk to you. And I thank you so much for really laying out clearly how, how much, how important it is for all of us that we learn how to relax in this world, even in the midst of all the stress and especially because of all the stress, both for us and for our animals. So thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Kristen. This was um, really enjoyable to have this conversation with you. Yeah, very fun. And you listeners, thank you so much for caring enough about yourself, your pets, to, to want to take steps to transform your world and their pets, their, their world also. Until next time. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today. 